Now that we know the relationships between the angle pairs that are formed by two parallel lines being intersected by a transversal, we can use those relationships or properties to help us find missing angle measurements. If we give you one of these eight angles, you can use those properties to find the measures of all the other angles. Because for each angle pair, we know it's either going to be congruent, so the same measure, or supplementary, which means they have to total to 180. So here we're told that x is equal to 34 degrees. Now just using this one angle measurement, we can find the measures of all of the other seven angles in the diagram. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. So the order that I list the angles doesn't have to be the only way to do it. I'm going to start with just angle 7 because I know that angle 7 is vertical with that 34 degrees. And vertical angles are always congruent to each other. So angle 7 would also be 34 degrees. I would recommend that you draw the diagram out in your notes so you can mark it up and put the angle measurements down like I'm doing here. Okay, now I'm going to look for other angles that are 34 degrees. Remember that alternate interior angles are congruent to each other. Well, if we look at angle X here, 34 degrees, angle X and angle 3 are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle 3 would also be 34 degrees, and so would angle 1, because angle 1 is vertical with angle 3. Now, for angle 2 and angle 4, there's a different ways that you could do it. One way to do it would be to look at angle 2 is a same side interior with the 34. And for same side interior, we know that those are supplementary. So angle 2 plus 34 has to add to 180. Well, if we do 180 minus 34, that means that angle 2 is 146. We know that angle 4 is also 146 degrees because it's vertical with angle 2. For angle 6 and angle 8, we can find those in a few different ways. Um, you could do corresponding. So angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent, which means angle 6 is 146. Or you could also look at the fact that 6 makes a line with the 34. And 180 minus 34 is once again 146. Angle 8 would also be 146. Notice how half of my angle measures are 34 and the other half are 146. Whenever we have a pair of parallel lines being intersected by a transversal, we're going to end up with eight total angles and four of them are going to measure one number and four of them are going to measure the other number. When you're doing questions like this where you need to find the missing angle measurements, please draw out the lines on your paper and draw in the angle you know and use that to find the other angles. It really does help to actually draw it out on a piece of paper so you can see what the measures are. That concludes Lesson 2.1 Part 2. Thanks for watching. Bye.